This is a case of routine phago emulsification of nuclear 3 cataract, and this case was complicated by rupture of the posterior capsule just before IOL implantation. I have skipped and fast forward non irrelevant part of the surgery to focus on the incident itself. Now, this is cortical cleanup, and while trying to irrigate some adherent cortical fibers to the posterior lens capsule, I had rupture of the posterior capsule. My first reaction was immediate injection of OVD inside the capsular bag, trying to prevent vitreous from prolapse into the anterior chamber. At that time, the only available uh, OVD was cohesive OVD, so I have injected cohesive OVD, and this is followed by dispersive OVD for further tamponade the vitreous. And because of the rush, as you can see, the nurse didn't prime the dispersive OVD cannula before handling it to me. That's why we had some air bubbles inside the anterior chamber. It's not a big deal. We can just manually aspirate those air bubbles and continue management of this complicated case. So the first reaction was just injection of OVD. It's preferable, of course, to start with dispersive OVD, but if the dispersive OVD is not available, we can inject cohesive OVD. This is the non-edited part of the surgery, and you can see here I'm injecting more dispersive OVD, trying not to disturb the anterior hyaluronic phase because I believe at that time there is no vitreous inside the anterior chamber. So I decided to continue implanting the single piece IOL through 2.2 millimeter incision as planned from the very beginning because the lens was already loaded inside the cartridge and the injector. As you can see, I have implanted the lens inside the anterior chamber and taking the advantage of slowly unfolding of the hydrophobic acrylate lens, I could manipulate the lens so each haptic would unfold in the area of presumed maximum support from the torn posterior capsule. Now the lens has been completely unfolded inside the capsular bag supported from either side by the remnants of the posterior capsule. The lens is well centered, but to add extra stability, it's mandatory here to do the reverse optic capture. Now I'm popping out the optic above the rexes. At this time, the haptics are situated inside the capsular bag and the optic has been prolapsed into the sulcus above the rexes. This adds extra stability of the single piece IOL in cases of open posterior capsule. You may argue about the potential chaffing of the posterior surface of the iris by the sharp border of the anterior optic lens. However, according to my experience, I didn't encounter any case of pigment dispersion after doing the reverse optic capture. As you can see, the lens is very well centered, and after doing irrigation aspiration, we can add extra stability of the lens by trying to bring the pupil down by injection of acetylcholine inside the anterior chamber. And bringing the pupil down does not add extra stability of the lens, but confirm the absence of the vitreous inside the anterior chamber by the roundness of the pupil. So far, I believe that I didn't have vitreous inside the anterior chamber. I didn't want to do past plantar vitrectomy to uh, clear this part of the posterior capsule that might interfere with the visual axis of the patient because I believe at that time it will retract and won't interfere with the visual axis of this patient. I'm doing here irrigation aspiration just prior to conclusion of the surgery. And as you can see, this is the first post-operative day, and you can see that surgery looks absolutely uneventful, and the patient enjoyed good visual outcomes. Thank you very much.